the Texas border where buses are coming across without Border Patrol being allowed to inspect them, disgorging groups of uh, youth from Latin America, mainly Mexico, who are then loaded on buses and other um, vans and taken to private churches and other facilities all over the country. The churches are premeditatedly being involved uh, in this lawless takeover that is sanctioned by the government and the trafficking of the young children into the nation that Obama has encouraged. Our reporters are going to some of these churches right now. Then they're going to go back and show more video of the illegals disgorging. Now, <clears throat> dinosaur-run media will not cover this, or they call it a crisis that just happened. We don't know why. All of Latin America is in deep trouble. Even countries that were doing better like Brazil are. The Caribbean's crime rate is more than doubled. Just type in the search engine, Caribbean crime rate increases. It's all falling apart. The world is in a global depression. And Obama is saying, if you can get here, you're legal. 30 plus thousand children a month at one border area of Texas alone that the Border Patrol is catching and then been ordered to release. And I have the Huffington Post right here, because I mentioned this earlier and the crew uh, Googled it. Church groups ship illegals deeper into the U.S. Why DHS detainment facilities, military bases are swamped. Church groups welcome illegals with open arms. The Tea Party's reporting on that. And then I have the Huffington Post article right here about a tweet put out last week. New annual job rating areas, babysitting, diaper changing, burrito wrapping, cleaning cells. What's this? That's put out by the Border Patrol. And uh, they responded, the Huffington Post went with this saying, you're a racist. Let the racism flow. Folks, imagine if 30 million Americans, black, white, Hispanic, showed up in Mexico City or in Caracas uh, or in Brasilia uh, or in, I don't know, what's the capital of Guatemala? And said, hey, we're landing. We're here for the free stuff. They would laugh at you, throw you in a jail for a week, beat you up, suck 50 grand out of your family, or you would starve in a dirt bottom jail. You get caught doing one illegal thing in Mexico, being drunk, driving, anything, they're going to beat the hell out of you and suck and run a credit check on you and take your money. And that's called loving and good. They'll do it to white, Hispanic, black, they don't care. But that's okay. But you go to the United States and do it. Oh, my gosh, open arms. This is how political correctness was designed to kill us. And the country's going to collapse. So, hey, if you don't like, you know, having a job and owning your own house and prosperity, you should love this. Because just watch. This country is going to be in total depression beyond what it's already in when they're done with this. It's a stated plan. And again, I am not ashamed to sit here and talk about this, but I will say to you again, I don't say this because they're, you know, they're pushing the race. Their race label stuff means nothing to me. I could care less what color you are. This is a globalist program. Just like I oppose the globalists turning Iraq over to Al-Qaeda and killing every Christian they find, every Shiite they find. It's offensive, evil, proxy civil war. I oppose putting actual Heiling Hitler Nazis in control of Ukraine and calling it a peaceful revolution and calling it an elected government when it wasn't. I just oppose evil. I oppose injustice. It's not like I'm even some goody two-shoe. You let evil run rampant. It's over, folks. Now, he's going to be with us a little bit in the next hour, and then he's got to go. Dr. Stan Monteith of RadioLiberty.com has been fighting tyranny for over 40 years. 35 years he was a orthopedic surgeon in Santa Cruz. He led a delegation of physicians to the House Delegates of California Medical Association for 10 years. He's reached millions of people. He's a best-selling author. He wrote AIDS, The Unnecessary Epidemic, and documented that it was basically a bioweapon pointed at minorities. And... He's an amazing individual, and he spoke. We ought to find that and play it tonight, intersperse it with this interview. He spoke a few years ago, and I spoke to a packed crowd in Santa Monica. That was another speech I gave. That was in Santa Cruz uh, there for the KSCO folks. And he doesn't like to talk about it, but I wondered why when I heard his local radio show, when I heard him a local affiliate, he's out in California, when I heard it here in Austin, why I wasn't. hearing him on the air anymore. So I made some phone calls 
and learn that he has a very serious form of cancer. I know he's 80 plus years old and uh, you know nobody lives forever, but I hope he can stay here a lot longer. This is a guy that's broadcast six hours a day on four different radio shows he would do to over 100 affiliates for decades. And when we talk about the icons like Ron Paul and so many others that have come before us, the Red Beckmans, the G. Edward Griffins, uh, the Anthony Suttons, there have been so many. Dr. Stan Monteith is owed just an incredible debt. And that's why people tell me how great I am all day or, or what a wonderful job I've done. I, again, he isn't here for credit. In fact, he doesn't want credit. He didn't want to talk about his illness. But I want everybody to pray for Dr. Stan, but also just be thankful for Dr. Stan Monteith because so much of what we know today is because of him. And he has a book and film archive that he's offered for us to go into and copy. We haven't had the time or energy. We were out here inter interviewing him a few years ago. He had the flu and would go and lay down because we'd flown out there for about 30 minutes, go be sick in the bathroom, come out, do 30-minute interview, come back and do it again. That's the dedication of a doctor, a medical doctor, like Ron Paul, like Dr. Larry McDonald. So many of the great super patriots have been medical doctors, and uh, we just are so thankful for Dr. Stan Monteith. And I know today before he came on, he said, I don't want to talk about me. He told the folks this this morning, I don't want to talk about my illness I want to come on and talk about what's happening in Iraq and what's happening here and about the big picture. But I talked to him before the break. I said, people care about you, and we need to talk about it and discuss it. Uh, so, Dr. Stan Monteith, thank you so much for coming on with us, my friend. And uh, we just are really thankful for all you've done. How many years have you been fighting the New World Order? I know it's over 40, isn't it? I started in 1962, so it's been uh, 52 years. 52, Okay. I was going off an old bio, so 52. Tell folks a little bit about yourself, because, and then tell folks about what you're going through right now. Well, basically, uh, as I said, I'm a retired orthopedic surgeon. I do five hours of talk radio, five days a week, and what a privilege it is to get the information out. Now, as far as my illness is concerned, I have a, a T-cell lymphoma, uh, which, of course, uh, uh, I had no idea until suddenly the lymph nodes came up all over. But fortunately... Uh, why we have here in Santa Cruz uh, some excellent conventional doctors tied into Stanford, and they started me on chemotherapy, and all the lymph nodes are gone. Now, I also certainly am taking the finest alternative medicine, and we have several friends I've known for many years. One of them, Dr. Russell Blaylock, I think he's the finest alternative medical specialist in the country, and he's outlined a program for me of alternative treatments the amazing thing is about the alternative treatments is they potentiate the action of the chemotherapy. The chemotherapy just kills every cell, kills all this, every new cell that comes up, all the normal T cells, all the cells in your bone marrow, they, they kill everything. And basically, uh, that is bad, and they kill everything that is good. Well, basically, the alternative medicines uh, potentiate the action of the chemotherapy and killing the bad things, but actually protect the good cells. So this is what we're doing. And all in all, I feel pretty good. I feel very, very tired, but my mind is working. And uh, we have six treatments. We've actually had uh, uh, four of them now. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm got to be optimistic about it, what's going to happen. All we can do is wait and see and pray. It's really in God's hands. But we do cover the prayers of your listeners, Alex, and hope that people, if, if God wants me here for another three or four or five years, why, though, we'll be here. I really sort of want to see what's happening because we are entering a, a very, very difficult time, and I'm really very, very concerned about what's going on over there in the Middle East. And let me just comment on that basically what we're seeing in the Middle East today uh, with this war in Iraq uh, is exactly what we saw during the Second World War. What, 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 do we, what am I talking about? Well, basically, well, we are funding the Shia Muslims in Iraq. We are funding the Sunni Muslims in Iraq. We're funding both sides. And, and it really doesn't make sense unless you understand World War II. And this is one of my recent studies. And the most frightening thing is the realization that we funded the Nazis 
all during World War II. Just like Anthony Sutton, the congressional hearings confirm what McCarthy has said, the Soviets were funded all along by the robber barons, even during the Vietnam War. That's all declassified now. Our own government put Mao Zedong in to kill 80 plus million of his own people. It's the globalist above the nations playing them off against each other. Absolutely. We funded both sides during the Vietnam War. But, but more than that, I mean, we funded the Nazis during the Second World War. And basically the information is there. Uh, the books have been written by responsible people. Anthony Sutton wrote about this, and uh, at the time it just didn't make any sense. But now there's a fellow named John Loftus who's written a book called America's Nazi Secrets. And John has uh, a secure, had a security clearance three levels above top secret. That's right. He was at the highest levels of the Justice Department uh, and in national security with the 